Hi there, I'm Amy and I'm from the Breastfeeding Network. I work here at Ayrshire Maternity Unit as part of the Integrated Infant Feeding Team and today I'm here to talk to you about what's in breast milk. I'm going to use these ingredients to show you what's in breast milk. Breast milk is a living fluid so it changes from day to day, from feed to feed with your baby's changing needs. So the first main ingredient that's in breast milk is water. Breast milk is made up of about 90% water and the amount of water that is in breast milk changes from day to day, from feed to feed as your baby changes and develops. The amazing thing about breast milk is as well, it recognises if your baby needs more water. So a breastfed baby doesn't need any more water if it's a hot day, if they're feeling quite poorly. Mum's milk adjusts for baby's needs. Our next ingredient is fats. So we all know that we need fats for growth and energy, but we also need it for brain development. And the fats that are in breast milk, again, are the exact type of fats that baby needs at the aging stage that they're at. We've also got omega-3, 6 and 9, which is crucial for brain development. We all need it in our diets. We would get it from fish, beans, pulses. Babies get the exact amount of omega-3, 6 and 9 that they need out of their breast milk. Our next ingredient is protein. So this has turned our breast milk blue. Obviously we know that breast milk isn't blue, but this shows us that the protein in breast milk is all the way through the milk in every layer. So not just in the fatty layer, but right the way through in the watery layer as well. Protein that's in breast milk isn't very high in uh, quantity. However, it's the exact right amount of protein that a human baby needs. If we think about the protein that's in formula milk, there is a lot of it, but that's because it's based on cow's milk, which is made for baby cows. Protein that's in breast milk is easier for babies to digest. Therefore, breastfed babies are more likely to have smaller and less smelly poos, which is great for all of those nappy changes. So our next ingredient is sugars. Sugars are required for energy, but the sugars that are in breast milk, oligosaccharides, are particularly good for the gut. So you know the sort of um, probiotic drinks that as adults drink to promote the health of bacteria in the gut? That's what oligosaccharides do. The sugars in breast milk are also really easy for baby to digest, again helping with regular bowel movements and babies are less likely to get things such as gastroenteritis, any tummy upsets and things like that. All the vitamins that baby needs are in breast milk. And again, vitamins are all through the milk in the fatty layer and all the way through the watery stuff too. So it means baby gets vitamins no matter how long they feed for. In Scotland, the NHS guidelines suggest that everybody should take vitamin D supplement. This is due to lack of vitamin D in our diet and we don't get very much from the sun in Scotland. This includes all pregnant mums, breastfeeding mums and breastfed babies. Vitamin D is added to formula milk and therefore is not required if babies take over a certain amount of formula milk every day. Breast milk contains all of the minerals that baby needs, including calcium, zinc, iron. The amount of iron in breast milk isn't very high and this is due to iron being really easy for babies to digest. It's the exact right amount that baby needs. Moving on to a very important ingredient in breast milk and that's antibodies. Mum makes the exact kind of antibodies that baby needs to fight off different infections and illnesses. The amazing thing about the antibodies in breast milk is that mum doesn't even need to come into contact with those germs and illnesses. So for example, if mum's returning to work and baby goes into childcare and they are being sneezed over all day by little toddlers, Baby comes back to mum at the end of the day and has a breastfeed. Baby passes those germs through their saliva into mum's breast and mum's body makes the correct antibodies to fight off that infection. This is the amazing thing about breast milk is that it's made tailor-made for each individual baby. The next thing I want to talk about isn't physically in breast milk but does affect it. The first thing is medicine. So as with during pregnancy, it's always a good idea not to take any unnecessary medicines. 
always consult your pharmacist or doctor before taking anything when breastfeeding. It's usual that most things there is an alternative for it if the first option isn't safe. Cool. The next thing is food. So everything that mum eats affects her breast milk. So it can affect the flavour of mum's breast milk. That can be a good thing though, as baby gets used to lots of different flavours and lots of different textures. However, sometimes we have mums come to group and worry that their milk smells a little bit different or baby's being a little bit fussy at the breast when they wouldn't usually. But that's okay because we can, we'll come to the conclusion that mum's maybe had a spicy curry or something quite garlicky. Our final ingredient is glitter. Glitter represents the thousands of ingredients that are in breast milk that we, that we know are there but we don't quite know what they do yet. I also like to think that it represents the bonds between a mum and a baby that you can't bottle and you can't buy. So now we're going to talk through the stages of a feed. So the sponge represents the breast. Baby starts to show signs of making a feed and mum's breasts start to fill up. Mums will start to recognise when they're full and when they're empty. And baby latches on and starts sucking quite rapidly. Not quite like this, but the milk starts pouring out. This stimulates the letdown reflex, which is the hormone oxytocin produces. Moving on to the next stage of the feed, maybe we'll start to get into more of a pattern of sucking and swallowing. And you can see from our cup that it's getting a good mixture of the fatty layer of milk and the water layer. At this stage you'll see baby doing suck and a big swallow or maybe suck, suck, swallow. Moving on to the final part of the feed, and this is sort of like the pudding. So baby's getting the really fatty stuff. The breast never empties. It might start to feel emptier, but it never empties. It's constantly renewing breast milk. It's important to leave baby on the breast for as long as they want to be there, as it might not feel like they're doing very much, but they could be doing a flutter suck, which is getting all of this fatty stuff. Baby might fall asleep and come back for this, but that's okay, it's pretty tiring. So as you can see, the composition of the milk changes throughout the feed. It's important to feed baby when they ask to be fed. So baby will show feeding cues such as moving their tongue about, and moving their head from side to side, putting their hands up to their mouth. The absolute last resort is that baby starts crying. That's kind of like fork and knife on the table and starving. So we don't want to get to that point because baby can be distressed and it can be trickier to get them on. Breast milk works on a supply and demand basis, so the more that baby feeds, the more milk mum makes. Baby sends signals to mum's body to make the exact amount of milk that baby needs. Therefore, it's important for mums to feed responsibly, which means picking baby up and feeding them every time they ask. This means day and night. It's really important to feed babies at night time, as this is when the most prolactin is produced, which is the milk making hormone. Babies are born with a very small tummy. This means that they don't need an awful lot of milk to fill it, but it also doesn't take long before it needs filled again. When babies are born, their tummies are about the size of a cherry. And a few days later, it's grown to around the size of a Brussels sprout. By a week old, their tummies are around the size of a small egg. So it grows quite rapidly, but it's still quite small.